Hi, today I wanted to talk to you about tables, how to format them and how to uh, get the best out of their use. So in Excel, we can save data into a spreadsheet and we can sort it, we can filter this data. However, tables give you just a little bit more functionality. Let's see how this will work. First, how do we create a table? Well, we'll go ahead and highlight our data set and next, under the Home tab, we will use the Format as a Table option. And so here we can choose the style that we would like to use and then press OK. So right away we can see that our data is displayed differently. We can see the rows being highlighted and we have additional menus that can be used for sorting or filtering the displayed data. We can also filter and sort this data through advanced options. Uh, please notice that when I am uh, outside of the table itself, I don't have any additional menus at the top, but when I switch into the table that I just created, in Windows it'll say design here, but uh, on the Mac it says table. This is additional menu, all this additional functionality that you get just for working with a table. So here is where you can rename the table. Here's where you can remove duplicates of a table. You can add the total row. So when you click that, the total row will appear at the bottom. And then you can even choose uh, various functions that will be performed on the total row. So this additional functionality uh, means a lot, especially if you're operating uh, some complex data. So let's go ahead and go back uh, to home. And uh, let me show you then, once I click on the table, uh, let, let's see how this additional uh, custom sort works. So when you try to sort things, you might want to sort by multiple columns. Why? Because if you sort by just the first column, I'm going to do this right now, I have some repeated values. And in that case, I'd like to sort by the second column. Perhaps this is as simple as first sorting by last name and then by first name. And so you can do that. You can apply multiple sort levels uh, under the custom sort. And so you simply are going to add another row and now specify uh, the second uh, rule for sorting. And so we can see that nicely this is uh, sorting uh, on, in, on two levels. So now, what if I wanted to have my table, uh, as I scroll through this longer table, continue to display my headers? So this is for displaying the spreadsheet on the screen. There's another way to do this if you would like to have the top uh, headers on the printout. We'll, we'll show you in a minute. But in this instance, what we are going to do is we're going to go to View uh, tab. And here we have the option of freezing the top row. And when you do that, notice that as I scroll down my top row, uh, the headers or column uh, names continue to stay uh, with, uh, with my scroll. Now, another way to do that, I'm going to unfreeze. Another way to do that is to click on the second row and then press freeze panes and it's going to have uh, the same result. A uh, point of interest here, if you are freezing uh, the row and now you're asked to add a footer, uh, you're going to run into difficulty if you are switching to the uh, page layout because it won't let you. You'll have to clear your uh, uh, frozen paints. So instead, there's a trick where we're going to navigate to the uh, margins. So we're going to uh, switch back to margins and then let's go to custom margins and from custom margins we have a header and footer link from here we'll go, we're going to go to custom footer and here we have some options we can uh, provide uh, for example name of uh, the spreadsheet uh, followed by um, the path to it and to all these buttons can be very helpful in quickly orienting us uh, within uh, within uh, the variables that can be used for names within footers. So with this uh, in place, uh, let's talk for a second about 
uh, the uh, special options that we have inside of for a table. So I'll click on the table and I'll switch back to the design or the table tab. Here we can remove duplicates. Uh, we can uh, also select the total row. Uh, we can change the styles of our table uh, at any time. So now let's talk about uh, repeating field names on all pages. Previously, we froze the top row, which allows us then to see the header uh, while the spreadsheet is displaying things on the screen. So what if we wanted to now display these headers uh, while we are printing? And so this is done by navigating to page layout and then printing titles. Just to demonstrate to you um, how it's going to look without uh, repeating rows, I will clear this field, and we'll go to file, and we'll go to print, and notice that um, on my uh, spreadsheet, I have um, on the first page, I have my yellow header, but then as I go to the next page, those headers are missing. So we would like to have on every page, while printing on every page, uh, repetition of the headers so that uh, if you only have one page in hand, you still know what the headers mean. Well, this would be done then by navigating to page layout and then print titles and then selecting the first row. And so now we're going to say OK. Let's go back to file and then uh, print. And notice that on every page now I have these headers. So that's what it means to repeat field names on all pages. Let's go ahead and uh, work for a second about on, on page breaks. So let's say that I would like to have a page break after the grouping of these zeros and then another page break uh, after getting to 700s. I can accomplish that by clicking on the first row that needs to be on the new page and then under page layout going to breaks and then pressing insert break. Now a blue line shows up here automatically. I can actually manipulate this blue line. I can change uh, where it goes and uh, um, I can uh, uh, add an additional one at my 700s by again going to page breaks and inserting the page break. We can also preview all our page breaks in one place by navigating to view and then page break preview. You can actually manipulate the page breaks from here as well. Uh, and uh, you can add page breaks here and, uh, and move them around. So now let's talk for a second about another option, which is conditional formatting. So to see conditional formatting, we have to navigate to the Home tab. We will select um, part of the table that we would like to format in a special way. And conditional formatting is right on the Home tab. Here we can choose data bars. And data bars are really nifty because you get to display the data in a visually appealing way. So especially if these are percentages, uh, it, it looks really nice. You could also uh, display this data through conditional formatting by using the highlight cell rules where we're going to um, perhaps uh, uh, create a rule for something that's, that's greater than a specific number. Perhaps in this instance, we're going to say that uh, everything that's uh, greater than five needs to be highlighted in red. We do have other options here, but we're going to highlight in red. And so you can see that I added additional special formatting. So if we retype this value uh, and change it, that formatting changes because it's conditional. So conditional formatting is right next to format as a table, which is where we started. The last thing I want to show you in this video are structured references. So previously we talked about absolute references, those with dollar signs, and then the relative references, which are all the other simple references. So let's say that I wanted to create a formula here where I'm going to take uh, the C2 uh, and then divide it by B2. And, uh, of course, the table is so efficient that it already fills in automatically for me the, uh, the entire column. 
But this is how we would have done that in the past. Just divide one by the other and call them by using the column heading uh, names. So how else can you do that? You can do this by, um, oh, let me redo that. So we're going to, uh, we're going to do C2 divided by B2. So you can do it in another way by using different references, the structured references. Notice how this is done. You press the equal sign key, which takes you into the formula mode. And now we can select the C2, but it isn't called C2. It's actually called answer time, which is the heading name right in our first row. So now we can start using logical references across this table, and that's what's called structured reference. So now I can divide that by B2, but of course now it's called answer time because that's what the heading says. I press enter, and we have the same result. However, uh, you could make a case that these expressions make more sense to human beings, so the structured references perhaps are better. This, uh, let's go back here. So this uh, at sign means the current row or this row. So notice we don't have to worry about uh, number two, that's the second row. Uh, this formula already knows that this relates to the current row. So those are structured references. And again, in order to use them, you simply are going to put the equal sign in and then just click on the column that you would like to reference. So hopefully this is useful to you and uh, have fun in this project.